Welcome back to Arthritis Now. I'm your host, Kyle Langan, and today we're going to be finishing up our talk with Dr. Martin Kriegel and his research on how gut bacteria may initiate autoimmune diseases. If you missed part one, check it out right here. If not, sit back and relax and let's jump right in. What is a, a gut microbiome specifically? What is that? I know that I saw that word a lot on your research. Yeah, so microbiome is essentially just the, the summary term for all of the bacteria that live in, in the gut, the gut microbiome, for instance. But there are other microbiomes. Microbes are all o- over and all around us. There are, of course, skin microbiomes, and uh, there's even microbiomes in, in rooms. And it's just another term uh, of the scientists to tell these are all the microbes, not just the individual ones, but all taken together in a certain niche. I know, and can you explain what um, endogenous retrovirus is? I know that's another um, aspect of research that you're focusing on as well. Sure. So this is um, also evolving more recently in the lab, but uh, in the field as a whole, it has been the notion for some time that viruses, not, not only those that float around and we can get infected with, but those that live in us uh, can actually contribute to autoimmunity. But just to first explain these so-called endogenous retroviruses, Endogenous means inside of something, inside of us um, hosts or human beings. Um, And there are indeed some viruses or at least the genetic material for viruses that live in us for many, many millennia. And probably evolutionarily uh, just happened that these viruses were good for us perhaps in some way or at least not harmful so that we just live with them, just like we live with those bacteria in the gut. And it's, it's really intriguing, but just like uh, the mitochondria, the powerhouses in our cells, um, we think they actually came from bacteria that just kept on living with us until they really became part of our cells. We have viruses that are integrated in our genome, and these are called endogenous retroviruses. And the big deal for us as autoimmune researchers is that there may be the potential that these uh, viruses may drive autoimmune diseases if someone again, by their genetic predisposition, react to the particles that are produced by these endogenous retroviruses. And to make it even more complex, my lab specifically looks at how these microbes in the gut may actually interact with the immune response to those endogenous retroviruses. Or what are the most prevalent autoimmune diseases that can stem from the kind of research that you're like investigating? Is it, is it mainly lupus or is it rheumatoid arthritis as well? Or? It, it could be rheumatoid arthritis and also Sjogren's syndrome mm-hmm. as well as scleroderma. There's a, a variety of rheumatic diseases that have a component of antiphospholipid syndrome, which is this clotting autoimmune problem I mentioned earlier. Yeah. And these endogenous retroviruses, they are in all of us. So we are just trying to figure out right now in a lupus model how it contributes, but it may well play a role in rheumatoid arthritis. And I should mention, of course, as you may know, lupus patients do get arthritis, or as well as Jurgen syndrome patients. So arthritis is quite prevalent in the rheumatic diseases. Right. And because lupus is closely tied to like rheumatoid arthritis, for an example, um, is hopefully the goal that if you find um, a breakthrough in your lupus research, that it could um, help patients who have rheumatoid arthritis as well? Sure, sure. In the broader scheme, uh, absolutely. Just to go back um, a bit to, to the, um, to, I, I talked about diet a little bit, and you said there's some research going on involving that. Um, is, it, is it apparent yet what kind of diet is most conducive to not contracting an autoimmune disease that you found? Uh, it's still very early. Um, in other immune diseases, it, it looks like resistant starch diets like potatoes or bananas Um, that contain a lot of those, um, seem to be beneficial. Mm -hmm. It's a little early to make a broad statement about that because it really depends on each microbes that live in in, in the patient and as well as the disease um, one would like to modulate. But generally, um, the the more starch-rich or fiber-rich diets seem to really be beneficial, not only for metabolic diseases, as people know already for some time, but also for immune-mediated or inflammatory diseases. And is, the, is each person's, the microbes that kind of make them up inside, they're all a little bit different? I mean, they're kind of the same in a way that you can do, you know, a lot of experiments to get a general idea, but they're all a little bit customized to each person? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it's, again, still a very young field, but um, the National Institutes of Health had this major initiative, the Human Microbiome Project, where 
about 300 healthy subjects were sequenced, uh, their microbiomes were essentially analyzed, not only within each person but also across time. And what um, was the result of that is that we learned that there's indeed a lot of variability between people, um, but they're quite stable within each person. Um, but they can be as unique as that some think of new forensic ways to um, identify a person by uh, a sort of a microbial fingerprint on, on the keyboard. Hmm. Thank you so much. I think that's pretty much um, all that we had to kind of go over. Did you have anything else that you'd like to add? No, again, my, my deepest thank you for the foundation. It's really been fantastic and also uh, we were excited to be funded. Yeah, well, we're excited that you could um, be funded as well and we're happy that for all the work that you're doing. So thank you again and um, we will talk to you soon. Thank you very much, Kyle. All right, Bye. thanks. Thanks for watching part two of our interview with Dr. Martin Kriegel and his research on gut bacteria and lupus. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest Arthritis Now episodes, and make sure to check out curearthritis.org for all the latest info on the foundation.